folks, welcome back to another video. Join me in sunny Devon. Ah, a bit nicer here than Wales, isn't it? Um, down by the seaside, waves lapping up. I hope they're not too noisy. Every now and then a boat goes past and there's a bit of wash, but I'll stay dry, but hopefully it doesn't affect the sound quality too much. Uh, it's lush down here, isn't it? Um, I haven't been climbing today. I've actually been sailing this morning. I haven't been sailing for years. I wasn't trusted with anything too important, just pulling a few bits of rope every now and then. Um, but it's well nice. I thought today, I'd have a quick chat about weather because I'm down by the seaside and you know it's really important for sailing and stuff the weather isn't it but more importantly for us as climbers and mountaineer types it's crucial for us as well isn't it and you know as a Brit I'm obsessed with the weather uh, as most of us are so yeah a lot of our conversations start with the weather they finish with the weather and actually probably has a good chunk of the middle that's all about the weather as well isn't it so it seemed like a useful thing to go on about what we're going to chat about first is the forecast that I use, and there's a few of them that I choose to use. The first one is MWIS, Mountain Weather Information Service, okay? Uh, the guy that does that, Jeff, by his own admission, creates a fairly pessimistic forecast, but I quite like that. I like looking at the forecast and knowing it's probably not going to be any worse than that forecast suggests, right? It's a really detailed forecast, everything you'd expect from wind directions, wind speed, uh, you know, whether it's going to rain, whether it's going to snow, what the temperature is, what the temperature is at different heights, all the things you'd want for a mountain forecast with a, a good outlook as well. Um, I really like it. I think it's probably the best mountain forecast you can get, you know, that's readily available. The next one for me, it used to be YR.no, a Norwegian one, really good app, website as well. And it used to work really well. There's no human influence to it. It's all done on computers and algorithms and stuff. And I don't find it's as accurate as it used to be. And someone told me it's because their computer modeling system changed slightly. Um, so I, I kind of do look at it, but I look at it as just a bit of a, a general overview of the coming days. It seems to be okay at that rather than the specifics. One advantage of the app is you can look something like a week in advance and not many forecasts have, have a decent bit of that. So I tend not to use that one. I tend to go for Met Office as my other normal forecast because it seems to be more accurate these days. Those two used to be the other way around for me. I used to love the YR, Met Office wasn't so good. But these days it seems that in North Wales, Met Office just seems pretty good actually as far as any forecast is. It's got all the right bits of information. It looks far enough in advance. And it just gives that kind of information that I want as a, a general overview, but will see me with a bit more accuracy. You can type in like Snowdon Summit compared to Llanberis and it'll get a different forecast, but it's all just done by computers rather than someone looking at the influence of the mountains like on the MWIS one. If you delve a bit deeper into the Met Office site, there is a mountain specific forecast as well. So it's worth checking that out. Personally, I don't think it's kind of presented quite as nicely as it once was. So it's not quite as appealing, um, but it's quite useful. So I tend to use those three, and you kind of get, you just have to have a bit of experience and mix them up. So I've said MWIS, it's probably not gonna be any worse than that. And then use the other two to pick and choose what you want, basically. There's loads of other forecasts out there. You know, XC, weather, windy, I'm sure there's hundreds of others. So, um, uh, you know, comment below if you've got any good ideas on that one. There are some apps around as well that compare loads of different forecasts. Rain radar is pretty good as well. It's like a live thing. There's a few different apps that do similar things. You can literally just see the rain moving across and where it's forecast to go to. That's, that's a handy one. What I do look at though as well are the surface pressure charts. So if you go on the Met Office site and search for that, you get those little maps up and that might mean something to you, but it might not. For a short video like I'm doing now, I think there's a few key bits of information that are useful from that. You look at it and you'll see like an outline of the UK, Europe and some other stuff, some uh, the time and date and everything. And if you click on the play button on the Met Office site, it shows you in like 12 hour blocks where everything is moving to. OK, so I quite like that. But what's on there? Well, I think there's only a few things that we really need to know. Isobars, that's the black lines that are in circles or some shape resembling sort of a circle. They join areas of equal pressure they'll be moving around and X marks the spot that's got an H or an L on it, a low or a high pressure. High pressure, clockwise, that's where the winds go around that high pressure. Low pressure, it's the opposite, anti-clockwise. So that's quite handy because it means we can work out which way the wind is going to be blowing. You can look at it and go, okay, well that's coming from the southwest, northeast, whatever it might be. So that's useful. And as a rough rule as well, you can count the amount of isobars over the UK and times that by five. 
and that'll give you the wind speed as a really rough idea. Don't get too hung up on it, but it gives you a rough idea. So if you had five isobars across the UK, you could expect somewhere around 25 mile an hour wind speeds. It's okay as a rough rule, but that's what it is. So we've got isobars, we've got the direction it's, they're moving. So that's wind stuff. What about precipitation, rain? Other stuff on that uh, map are fronts. And there's three types of fronts that we'll look at uh, on that map. There's ones with triangles, and there's ones with semicircles, and there's ones with semicircles and triangles, and they'll be attached to a black line. They'll move across um, the UK, direction depends on what the uh, weather systems are doing, but all we really need to know is fronts bring bad weather, they bring rain, okay? Depending on the type of front, different sort of rain, whether it's heavy rain, continuous rain, whatever, I'm not going to go into that now you do get a little black line without those semicircles and stuff. That's a trough, so that just brings a little bit of rain. This is real simplistic, but I think it's quite useful to know, actually. So that's the kind of information that we, as like proper amateurs, can get off those pressure charts. We can get wind speed, wind direction, and whether it's raining or not raining. We can't tell, really, temperature off that, okay? So it's worth having a look at those and have a look at them in conjunction with MWIS, uh, with Met Office and other stuff. And then you can kind of start to build a picture of if it's fitting with what you're expecting. I think it's quite nice to have a little understanding of it. But we're really lucky these days, aren't we? We can get so many forecasts on our phone, on the computer, um, that it's really, it's not that hard work to get a good forecast these days. Our weather is pretty unpredictable in the UK because it's, it's kind of messy weather generally. We've got, we're surrounded by sea, uh, so we, ha we just have a maritime environment that is often wet and windy, plus we've got mountains to affect all that as well. If you're looking at where the wind's coming from, we can just think northeast, southwest. North cold, south is warm, east is dry because it's over Europe, west is wet because it's over the oceans, and you can combine those to give you a rough idea of what temperatures are and whether it's going to be raining, not raining, that kind of thing. But just bear in mind, even the really good forecasts, we know they get it wrong, so we have to go out and be prepared for like every eventuality, but we can kind of plan our day around it, can't we? You know, picking climbing crags that are out of the wind if it's a windy day, um, taking into account what sort of time it's gonna start raining. We can plan sessions around that if you're working, or you know, maybe it's better for evening cragging that day. Is the wind gonna dry the crag? All that kind of stuff. So it's kind of what we do with the forecast that really matters actually, isn't it? What kind of kit we're gonna take? Normally, take everything and you'll be all right, won't you? I hope that's been of some interest. It's a tricky one, the weather, because like I say, being here, we just don't get a lot of super stable weather like many other countries do. So it is a bit of an obsession for us Brits, isn't it? But it's worth giving some thought to. Have a little comment below. If you find that a particular forecast works best in your particular area, let me know. It's useful, isn't it? Some people living here in Devon might use something different to me living in North Wales because they find it's more accurate. Just the way it goes, isn't it? Uh, I think you have to find the ones that work for you and find a few, take the best bits, but don't be disappointed if it doesn't tie in with the best bits. That's my outlook on it. Uh, it's, it's a tricky one, the weather. Do find us on Insta, find us on Facebook. Do fire away with any questions as always. You know, I'm happy to help as best I can. I always say that. Click the like button, smash the subscribe button. As again, I always say it's massively appreciated. Hope you've enjoyed this video. More videos coming up very soon. I'm slipping away. So don't